Hello, you all techies out there. Would like to welcome you all on my YouTube channel, White High Security. Here on this channel, we focus on real technical configuration related to cloud, cloud security, network security, and, and many more technical topics. So yeah, without further delay, let's get started with our topics for today. And yeah, I would like to thank you in advance for watching. So yeah, hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we are discussing uh, the automation piece of Microsoft Sentinel, or you can say the respond pillar. So this is the last pillar uh, in Microsoft Sentinel. We already discussed collect, detect, investigate, and now it's time to discuss more about the automation or respond pillar of Microsoft Sentinel. So let's go ahead and see uh, this in action in Microsoft Sentinel portal. So here I am at uh, my Microsoft Sentinel portal. So here you can see there is an automation option. So basically this is uh, what we are talking about, the SOAR capabilities or automation capabilities of Microsoft Sentinel. So here you can see there are different options, automation rules, playbook templates. So there are two ways of, you know, uh, doing things automatically in this particular uh, solution. One is through automation rule and second one are playbooks, which are nothing. It's just your logic cap, which is again another service from Microsoft to build your logic or, you know, to build your automation. So basically you can use uh, automation rules separately, plus you can rule automation rules and, you know, in with combination of playbooks. So yeah, let's see uh, how we can create an automation rule and what are the different options you know it gives us. So I will go ahead and hit on create. Uh, I will hit uh, create automation rule. I can give it a good name, test rule, or you can give it according to yourself. It should be you know self-explanatory. So once you have uh, you know multiple rules, you can identify what exactly it is doing. So basically, trigger would be when whenever there is an incident triggered in Microsoft Sentinel. And for which incident you want to do it, so you can select, uh, you know, uh, one incident, two incident, or whatever quantity you want, or you can select all of them from here as well. So suppose uh, I, you know, uh, want to close this particular alert automatically. I don't want to say this, and you know, whenever this alert is is, is uh, happening, I want to close this automatically. So I can select that. You know, this is my test rule when incident is created and this particular incident is created according to, according to this particular rule or uh, take action. Uh, I can select, you know, first assign owner and even you can select the owner of this particular incident. So I can hit assign to me. After that, I can hit another action. Uh, I can uh, like hit change uh, status and I will put closed and I will give the reason. So special what expected or, you know, whatever classification I want to go. I would like to give it as a false positive or incorrect data. So whatever comment I want to put, I can put here as well. I want to close this automatically. Something like that you can give. So once you apply this, so whatever what will happen now, whenever uh, uh, like when this particular alert is triggered, Sentinel will go ahead and assign it to me and you know close it automatically. So cut. So something like this you can do to achieve automation. Let me quickly give you an example how it is beneficial or you know uh, like in a real case uh, example. So suppose this alert is there. Failed logon attempts in auth prep. So basically if I go to this particular alert and you know search for the details I will see that you know it is alerting me that multiple authentication failures are coming from this particular IP. Please go ahead and look at this. So right now I can see this particular IP is there. Let me expand it just a second. So this particular IP is there. So, I mean, let's, let's, you know, let's assume a case that this is your office IP and multiple users are, you know, trying to access this server from, from this particular IP only. And, you know, if there are hundreds of users, they you know tend to forget password, tend to forget username and all that stuff. So basically, now what you want to do, if this particular alert is coming from your office IP, and you know, so uh, in that case, you don't want to see it. You just you know want to close it automatically. So how we can do this? So let's go back to Microsoft Sentinel portal, go back to automation, and then create an automation rule. So automation rule, I will hit. Now I will give it a name, close 
an incident from office IP I can mention the IP here so when incident uh, is created I will choose as a trigger contains now I will search for that specific alert which I want to close automatically so that was failed logon attempts in auth brief so basically what our logic is saying right now so when there is an incident and when there is a this particular incident not all I mean when incident contains this similarly and it contains IP address let me search it I well, sorry uh, IP address IP address is equals to my office IP address so right now my logic is when there is this incident and it is you know coming for this particular IP address which is my office IP address now I will define my action so what I want to do first I want to you know assign it to myself or you can assign it to any other user so I will assign it to myself and then I would like to close it similarly change status close suspicious but expected I will put the relevant comment comment this is coming from my office IP address please ignore this please ignore so I will put this comment and I will hit apply so now once this incident will come it will be automatically close if it is coming for that particular IP which is my office IP so now with the help of the automation rule I can reduce false positive because you know I am expecting the failures from my office IP for, from different users so that's why I don't want to waste my time you know investigating on that particular incident again and again so now I will close that automatically so these kind of automation you can do so another example there are you know separate teams in your company in your organization you know somebody is handling MFA somebody is have, have like handling virtual machines somebody is handling windows virtual machines so basically you can create separate rules so you can you know choose incident related to windows machine and you know automatically assign to windows machine you know team then separately you know if if uh, incident are related to identity you can automatically assign to identity identity team something like that from the help of this automation so these are the few use cases which you know you can achieve through automation so yeah i mean just wanted to give you an example how it can be helpful for you to use this automation rule and you know you can you can save your day or you can you know reduce your you know or repetitive works you know something like this okay uh, the next option is playbooks so again I mean if I uh, discuss little bit about playbooks these playbooks are the uh, are the uh, these playbooks are based on logic caps which is again a service from Microsoft which is used to you know create your automation or your flow uh, you know you know uh, with your logic so it can you know it is used as a separate service as well but yeah I mean these playbooks are based on logic caps in Microsoft Sentinel as well so yeah these are some examples of you know the playbook template which are provided by Microsoft security expert by default so we can just you know uh, uh, check them and you know uh, we can use them to create uh, you know advanced level of automation so suppose just just let's review this one block active directory user so based on the incident what it can do it can you know automatically go to active directory and block any particular user so suppose you are getting repetitive you know alerts for any particular user that you know you think it is compromised then you can you know run this playbook automatically and it will go into active directory and block this particular user similarly uh, if you are getting you know some suspicious IPs uh, in some particular alerts you can use this uh, automation flow to block those IPs into Azure firewall IP groups so this is what you can also do similarly if we go down we can you know mark a user as a risky user based on some certain alerts that's what you can also do similarly th similarly there are you know playbooks to create a you know service now ticket or you know any other you know ticketing service tool so basically what what you can do based on every incident you can create and and ticket uh, with the similar information and multiple you know ticketing tools so you can see 
Jira is there, then you know ServiceNow is there, and you know, other tickets uh, ticketing solutions are there. Uh, this is again, uh, I mean, uh, examples of automation, advanced level of automation. Similarly, you can you can dismiss an Active Directory users, you know, after that, once you have marked them as a risky user. Similarly, there are another example. Let us discuss uh, 102 as well. So you can get a notification or an email when you know there is an incident uh, which is closed. So simply you can do that as well. You Similarly, you can get a notification on your you know Teams channel as well. So Teams channel as well again you know post a message on Slack. All those things are available by you know automation. So you know uh, there is a certain condition then you know you want to see each and every incident on your slack teams or you know other platforms so that's also available similarly if we talk about uh, the you know starting label of playbook there should be one for sending email let me just quickly search for it send email so yeah basically this one you can use to you know uh, send emails to your customers or you know uh, to yourself as well once there is an incident so yeah, I mean, these are the example which you can use to, you know, create advanced level of uh, automation with the help of logic app and playbooks. We will be discussing more about these capabilities in, you know, upcoming video series. Once we will deploy these logic apps and, you know, or the advanced level of automation based on these templates, or simply we can create our own or, you, you know, we can take one of these and modify according to ourselves. So yeah, this is uh, this is uh, you know to give you an idea about the SOAR capabilities or in you know, the automation capabilities of this particular. Program. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this has been informative to you, and I would like to see you on the next one. Thank you. Any